All right guys, today we're gonna to be doing a bit of a stress test on my solar generator setup here. I built this thing about five years ago and I haven't really done that much with it. I've ran Christmas lights off of it in the winter time. I've got videos of that. And I've done a few update videos on this guy, but I haven't done a whole lot of experiments with it. Today we're gonna to be doing a bit of a stress test. We're gonna first off test to see how good a shape the batteries are in and then we're going to see how long it takes to recharge the batteries using nothing but the solar panels. So today actually seems like a pretty good day to start this test because it's actually supposed to be sunny for a little while according to the weather forecast. In my area we've had quite a bit of rain recently so this is kind of a first so uh, we're gonna go ahead and see what we can do with this thing. So I'll show you some of the equipment that I'm gonna to use to test this thing out and what all we're gonna do. First thing I'm gonna do is just hook up this load to the power inverter. I'm going to use my uh, Unity UT210 e multimeter to uh, measure how much current we're pulling off the batteries, and we're gonna time it, and that should give me a rough indication of how many amp hours this battery bank has. Speaking of the battery bank, I have three batteries. Each are rated at about 100 amp hours. Two of them are about five years old and they're they are uh, group size 27 uh, batteries and one of them is about seven years old and it's group size 24. They're all Everstart batteries from Walmart and they've held up pretty okay so far. So we're going to see how well these batteries have held up after all these years of uh, being hooked into the system. Now throughout the discharging test and the charging test I'm going to be using this little piece of equipment to monitor the battery voltage as well as the current that comes in from the solar panels. I'm mostly hooking this up because I'm curious to see what kind of uh, or what my solar generation looks like throughout the day. Now I've done some videos on this guy before but it's basically just a Bluetooth multimeter. It also has the ability to do data logging which is what I'm going to use it for in this case and this thing also can measure voltage and current at the same time which again is why I'm using that. And then I've got this little adapter, and I've got this little breakout adapter, which I've uh, done videos on in the past, and I can just plug this guy into that multimeter and then run my XT60 connectors in and out of this adapter, and it makes a really nice, easy way of hooking that guy up. Speaking of getting things hooked up, we'll go ahead and get this test prepared right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the solar panels. And that's so we don't have extra current coming in and throwing off our capacity measurement. Now I'll go ahead and get this set up so this guy will just plug in like so. And that will be our data logging device. And then the data logging device is going to go right between the batteries in this green box here. So I'm going to plug that in there. And we're going to plug this into here. For those unfamiliar with this system, this little green box has a... Uh, radio transmitter in it that actually sends the voltage and the current coming from the batteries back to a little monitor that I built back in the uh, back in the house so I can tell what the voltage is at any time. So there we go, you can see on the screen current voltage of the batteries is about 13 and a half and we're drawing about 50 milliamps, 57 milliamps there and that would just be the current that it takes to run the charge controller with no load on it. So on that multimeter we'll go ahead and enable our data logging so we're going to set our logging interval probably to one minute because this might go for uh, a few days but uh, anyway other than that we just have to say enable logging and that will start to write and that's going to start writing its data onto its SD card that I have in the meter I've got a 32 gig SD card so that should last for quite a while and the next thing I'm going to do power on our inverter and we're going to hook up this light to it so this is uh, roughly 500 watts. And we'll go ahead and turn that on, probably blind the camera. And according to the power inverter, we are pulling about 540 watts. We have about 12.6 volts. And you can see on this how our voltage is dropping quite a bit. We're already down 12.5 or so, according to this. And that would be the closest you would get to uh, the terminal voltage across the batteries is going to be this number. Voltage on this screen is going to be a little bit off probably because there's going to be some voltage drop in the cabling. Now in theory if we could use all of the capacity of the battery this thing would run for about six hours because we should be pulling roughly 50 amps out of the battery pack and we have roughly 100 amp hours. But these are cheap Walmart batteries and they rate them kind of weird. They rate it uh, I think 109 amp hours at one amp of draw 
which is not the normal way that you would rate capacity on a battery. And of course we also can't use all of the battery capacity. There's going to be some left over when we get done here. But I am curious to see how long this will run for. And I'm going to go ahead and get the amp clamp stuck on the back of the inverter and we'll see how much current we're pulling. All right, according to our Unity multimeter, we are pulling about 48.3 amps off the battery pack. And according to the inverter, we're pulling about 530 watts there. That measurement is in kilowatts, so it's 0.51 kilowatts, which is 520-ish watts. That's roughly right at the limit of this inverter. It is a quote-unquote 600-watt inverter, but the 600-watt rating is only for about five minutes. So the actual continuous rating on this guy, I believe, is 540 watts, so pretty much right on the edge. And according to this, we're sitting at about 12.2 volts, and the voltage is slowly starting to creep back up from the looks of it. You can see the very far uh, digits off that decimal point there. And that's a normal thing that these 12-volt batteries will do. When you first start to put a load on them, the voltage will sag down quite a bit. And then once they settle in at that load for a little while, apparently the chemical reactions or something start happening a little bit faster. Not really sure how that works, but uh, the voltage just start to rise just a little bit for a while. And at this point, I'm expecting the battery bank to sit at that 12.2 volts for quite a while and just slowly drain down over the course of probably at least a few hours. All right, so here's a bit of an update as to what's happening. It seems as though I might have a bit of funny business going on with the inverter because I came out here, the low battery alarm was going off, which I had kind of expected, but uh, I measured the voltage at the input terminals of the inverter, and the battery voltage there was still at about 11.3 or so, which according to the manual, the low voltage alarm shouldn't be coming on until about 11 volts or lower. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, and also the inverter isn't supposed to shut down until it gets down to about 11, or sorry, 10.5 volts and the inverter has shut itself down. And I also didn't think that it was actually supposed to completely shut itself off, which is what it did. I thought it was just supposed to show an error message and the fault light should be on. I didn't think it was supposed to completely just shut itself off like that. So right now our voltage is about 12.1 volts, which is uh, pretty high. This chart, 12.1 uh, volts would be roughly uh, 50 percent between 50 and 60 percent state of charge and this ran its load for about two hours almost exactly two hours so that means that we've pulled roughly 50 amps out of our batteries for about two hours so we've pulled roughly 100 amp hours out of the pack and we've drained it to roughly 50 percent capacity maybe a little bit higher than that so by that logic we have roughly 200 amp hours available in this battery pack so now, the next step of this, and of course it's gotten cloudy outside, it was nice and sunny earlier, but now we'll go ahead and hook up our solar panels again and we'll see uh, how much power we bring in and how long it takes to fully recharge this pack. Even with the uh, slightly overcast day, we're still pulling in a decent bit of power there, about 4.3 amps and 55 watts, so uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and leave this thing to it. All right, so anyone that's curious, I'll uh, go ahead and show you the solar panels that are in this setup. The main one is this guy, which is a 100 watt monocrystalline panel made by Renji. I'll show you the uh, specs on that. Hopefully you'll be able to see down in there, but there are the panel specs, 100 watts. And you can see the optimum amperage there is 5.29 with the maximum being 5.75. And the other set of solar panels I have for this are these Harbor Freight ones, which are kind of infamous at this point. But these are 45 watts in total, and they're amorphous uh, type solar panels. So in total, I have about 145 watts worth of solar out here. All right, so I've gone ahead and got the data off of the multimeter, and usually what this multimeter gives you is... Uh, all this information here, which isn't really all that useful. But it gives you UTC time in seconds, the amperage, and the voltage. So everything in these three columns is what the multimeter gave us. And everything else here has been computed in Microsoft Excel, actually, not Google Docs. But anyway, I've computed the wattage as well as I've turned the, uh, the Unix time here into a date and a time that matches the local time zone. 
and then the number of hours is basically just the number of hours since the test has started. Now I said I originally used Excel to make this and the reason why I switched over to Google Docs is because I could not get Excel to play nicely with graphing times for some reason. So you'll see over here I have like time on the x-axis of this graph and for some reason I could not get Excel to do that so I just open it in Google Docs and what do you know? It works with just a couple of button presses, so sometimes the free software works better than the paid stuff. But anyway, mini rant over, let's go ahead and start with this graph. So this is what the discharge graph looked like. Now you notice on this graph we started about 13 and a half volts or so, and then it dips down, and then it actually recovers just a little bit. And I mentioned this in the video, but this is just something that lead acid batteries are known to do, and I believe it probably has something to do with uh, how the chemical reactions take place inside those batteries. But after that initial little rise in voltage, it just slowly trails off until the inverter eventually decides to shut down at only about 11 and a half volts, which seems like a really high voltage for the inverter to cut off at, but but that's probably more of an issue with the inverter than the battery bank. And of course at 50 amps and a little bit over two hours, we have roughly pulled 100 amp hours out of the battery bank. All right, so we're gonna start looking at the charging graphs. So uh, this was the first day of charging. So right after I discharged the batteries, I reconnected the solar panels and started charging them again. This one started at roughly 1.30, I believe, and went till about eight. I just stopped these graphs once the solar panels quit uh, bringing in power. But anyway, you can see it got up to roughly 75-ish watts. Uh, I didn't quite ever hit 80, which is a bit interesting considering the fact that I have uh, about 145 watts total worth of solar. But I will also note that basically as soon as I started filming this video, it started to get a little bit overcast and you can kind of see these dips are where clouds are moving in and out and such. But uh, after about three o'clock, it seemed to level out until uh, it eventually didn't make any more power after around 7.30, maybe eight o'clock, uh, just completely quits. Uh, day two is kind of interesting. It again, never goes over 80 watts. It's almost like my Harbor Freight solar panels aren't actually doing anything. I might have to look into what's going on there, but, uh, Again, similar sort of thing. Looks like we peak at around roughly one o'clock and then we start getting clouds moving in and that's what these dips are. Uh, just clouds going in and out. You see when it's really cloudy, we're probably only pulling about 25 watts in there. That's around two o'clock in the afternoon. And then oddly enough, I don't know, this might've been another cloud or something, but there's a little drop off at the very end here around six o'clock. Now day three is a little bit wonky and the reason why is because during this time the solar panel was actually in a different position. Now of course this solar generator design was originally meant to be portable which means that we can just pick up that solar panel and mow underneath it. Now this kind of gives you some idea as to how useful a solar tracker might be because during this time the panel would have been facing east so right into the sunrise and you notice it's early morning from Oh, about 7 o'clock to 8.30, and we got up to around 60 watts there, which is pretty good for just that single panel and being that early in the morning. But as soon as I move the solar panel back, point it at south like you normally would, uh, the generation drops down to uh, maybe 30 watts, and then, of course, it climbs back up as the sun moves. Here at around 1.30, maybe 2 o'clock, you'll notice it drops off really sharply. And this is where the batteries got full. So everything after this time, the batteries are just float charging and we're not pulling in the maximum amount of power that we uh, could be pulling in from the panels because the batteries are already charged and there's no need to bring in any excess power really. And I did, just for the fun of it, make another chart for day four because it was still hooked up and right around nine o'clock or so, charge controller looks like it was decided that the batteries were almost full and then uh, put them into float charge mode there, uh, probably around 9.30 or so. And then of course it just float charged the batteries until I went ahead and unhooked the meter. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that little look at my small scale solar system. If you did go ahead and click on that like button. If you wanna see more videos on the system, go ahead and check out my channel. I also have a playlist of every video that I've made for this thing. And I'm hoping to continue to make more videos about this system. So go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.